10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Mission. And we have lift off. We just throttled down the engines in preparation for max Q, which stands for maximum aerodynamic pressure. This is the largest structural load that the vehicle will see throughout ascent. Should be coming up on max Q in a few seconds here. Max Q. And there's that call out that we just passed through max Q. In about a minute, we will have three events that happen very quickly one after another. That will be MECO, or main engine cutoff, stage separation, and SES-1, or second engine start-1. And main engine cutoff is where all nine of those M1D engines shut down to slow the vehicle down in preparation for stage separation. And there you just watched MECO, main engine cutoff. Stage separation confirmed. And that second stage engine ignite. And on your left-hand screen is first stage, making its way back to Earth. Bearing separation confirmed. And there, as you watch on your screen, that is confirmation that those fairing halves have deployed. Now, with stage two well on its way to orbit, stage one is now heading back to Earth and will perform two burns on its way down. Stage two is looking good and nominal. Got a nice view of that MVAC engine on your right-hand screen. Stage two is taking our Starlink payload to its targeted orbit, and these 60 Starlink satellites will join the constellation already on orbit, which, is, which are designed to provide high-speed, low-latency internet to people here on Earth, and especially to places where good internet is really hard to access. And again, for today, the landing zone is just read the instructions, which is currently out in the middle of the ocean waiting for this booster to come back. Stage two is looking good and nominal. Got a nice view of that MVAC engine on your right-hand screen. Trajectory. And there's a call out. The vehicle uh, second stage is on nominal trajectory. So that entry burn will last about 22 seconds long. And you can see on your left-hand screen the first stage. The grid fins are deployed. Uh, but they actually don't start steering until after entry burn. That's because it requires the atmosphere and air to be flowing through those grid fins. Stage one FTS is safe. Stage one entry burn zero. And there you can see the entry burn has begun. And as you saw, the plume started out small and then got larger, and that's burned for a total of three. Stage one entry burn shut down. And entry burn is now complete. As you see, those engines have shut down. So next up in about a minute or so will be that landing burn for the first stage. And as I mentioned earlier, it will just be the center. All nominal trajectories. It will just be the center E9 engine for the landing burn. And that's enough thrust to slow the vehicle down. The M1D engines. Stage one landing burn. There's confirmation, stage one landing burn. You can kind of see that burn kind of shaking the camera there. Stage one landing leg deploy. It will just be the center E9 engine for the landing burn, and that's enough thrust to slow the vehicle down. The M1D engines have 845 kilonewtons, or 190,000 pounds of thrust. Again, that's enough to slow this very large vehicle down to touch down on that drone ship that you see right there in front of you. That's just read the instructions. And this will be the third landing for this specific booster. Stage 
stage one landing Ooh. crew. And we had a little bit of a rough camera view there, but the Falcon has landed. So we'll see you back here at T plus 43 minutes for the second engine, second stage engine relight. Welcome back to the webcast for our 15th Starlink mission. And there you, you saw on your screen um, that SES-2 and SECO-2 happen very quickly. So we'll be back here at T plus one hour and two minutes for deployment. Welcome back to the webcast for our 15th Starlink mission. And there you could see on your screen, the stack of 60 Starlink satellites have successfully deployed from second stage. And what an awesome view with the sunlight hitting those Starlink satellites. And right there, we just watched the final deployment for SpaceX's 100th successful mission. How exciting and what an incredible milestone to reach. What an awesome view as well. The Starlink satellites will soon deploy their single solar array, and over the course of a few weeks, they will distance themselves from each other and use their onboard ion thrusters powered by Krypton to make their way to their operational orbit. And that brings our webcast to a close. Thank you as well to the range and the FAA for supporting today's mission. If you're interested in getting future information about our Starlink service, please visit Starlink.com and sign up for updates. Thank you and have a great day.